As we told you first on the five, a whistleblower says PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder is a ticking time bomb among Toronto Police Service. It's an alarming claim from a former police officer who says the suicides of two cops in Toronto recently means he can no longer stay silent. Here's Avery Haynes with the City News investigation when the blue line flatlines. Two police officers have hung themselves in less than five months. Nobody knows. Simon Fraser, 28 years with Toronto Police, a cop's cop through and through, and now a whistleblower. If somebody doesn't say something, more police officers are going to keep dying. Until he quit the force last year, Simon Fraser was a high-achieving sergeant. I ran citywide squads, street violence task force, Rolling Stones planning team. In 2012, after a series of traumatic police calls, Sergeant Fraser is diagnosed by his family doctor as having post-traumatic stress disorder. So I started speaking to a professional in the field of PTSD, and I did what I was told, and sure enough, I felt healthy again. That same family doctor then cleared Sergeant Fraser as fit for work. I walk into my staff sergeant. I said, uh, I got to submit an injured on duty form for PTSD. Ooh, sure you want to do that, Simon? It's going to be ramifications, man. Fraser says the impact was immediate. I get transferred off of my platoon, where at least I was doing some work, and assigned to an empty desk in the basement of my station. No computer, no phone, no duties. And my desk was right at the bottom of the stairs that every constable has to pass that door. And they're looking at you saying, this is what happens when someone well, says Well, people would stick their heads in and going, how bad does a sergeant have to screw up to get kicked off a platoon? Hey, what did you do? Fraser says the humiliation of being banished to the basement for months unhinged his recovery. You feel as though you had to quit your job before retirement because of your PTSD. Because of the way I was being treated. I'm proud to wear this uniform because I believe in the blue wall. And now when I'm realizing I have an issue that's been caused from the horrible things I've had to see and do. You guys are abandoning me, and not just abandoning me and washing your hands of me. You're making me worse. I don't believe the Toronto Police Service gives a damn about officers with PTSD. Police officers are killing themselves because of silence. Simon Fraser says the silence stops now. These papers are the basis of both a labor grievance and a Human Rights Commission complaint. His accusations, that he was pressured to keep his PTSD hidden, that police refused to return him to the line of duty despite medical evidence that he was fit, that he was assigned to humiliating and degrading working conditions, harassed, berated and disciplined, including by disclosing his personal information to other officers. This treatment, Simon Fraser's grievance says, reflects an institutional pattern of bias and discrimination against those with PTSD. Guys are afraid to speak out. They've seen what happens to other people. If an injury isn't treated, it gets worse. And the longer an injury goes without treatment, the longer it's going to take to get better when you finally do start getting treatment. Or you end up going to a funeral. Or we go to another funeral. Yeah, another one. It sounds to me as though you're telling me that this is a ticking time bomb on the Toronto Police Force. It's a ticking time bomb for any organization that doesn't get out ahead of this. We're big tough coppers. We're guys that work out, we carry guns, we, we help people, we protect people. Well, who's protecting us? And Simon Fraser says part of his Ontario, Ontario Human Rights Commission complaint uh, will request that there be mandatory training of PTSD and other ment health, mental health issues for the senior officers. These are powerful allegations. How have the police responded? Well, you know, Toronto Police Chief Bill Blair obviously not able to respond directly to Simon Fraser's uh, allegations. He does say that Toronto Police do take the uh, issue of mental health very seriously and that he's saddened by the two recent suicides of Toronto Police officers. That's a great loss for our organization, for their families, and, and, and of course it's a concern to us. We've done a lot of work within the Toronto Police Service on, on the psychological well-being of our members when it ultimately results in tragedy. And, and as I said, we've lost a couple of people um, recently and, and to, to, to suicide, and, and, and it's very, very difficult for, for the service, for their families, and for their, their colleagues and friends. And, and so we know that there's more that we can do. 
You're now asking for more police officers to come forward have, you, if they have indeed experienced PTSD problems. You know, and before the story even finished airing tonight, I have received calls from police officers mm -hmm. who do want to share their stories. So please do reach out to me on Twitter. I am at City Avery. And this is the first part of our investigation. Now, you spoke to the widow of a Toronto police officer late last week, at, at, and her husband had taken his own life. He was a police officer. Right, and we have that story coming up tomorrow. His name was Richard. Everyone called him Bucky. Uh, his wife, Heidi Rogers, says for more than a year, uh, her, uh, this 24-year veteran of the force mm. begged his superiors for help with the mental, issue, mental health issues that he was dealing with, and that not only were those pleas completely ignored, but that he was actually bullied for being weak at work. As well, Coming up on Friday, I do want to let you know that we will be breaking down just what Toronto Police mm -hmm. Services there are available and what are not available, as well some interesting information about what they're doing in York Region, something that might save lives from PTSD.